Hello Capricorn, this is your weekly video for November 7th, 2021. Take what resonates, leave the rest. Don't come to tarot for answers, come to tarot for confirmation from what you already know. Or if there's something that you kind of feel in your gut but you're not really sure and you need a little clarification, that's when you come to tarot. Other than that, listen to your own gut, listen to your intuition, and listen to your higher self. With that being said, I have green eventering on my Etsy store if you're interested in purchasing one with your zodiac sign on it. My Etsy store link is down below in the description box. I also to do uh, daily TikTok readings. And if you want to follow me on TikTok, my information once again is down below in the description box. This week, I did not pick a collective crystal. The reason why I didn't pick a collective crystal is because we have been going through so much. There was so many crystals I could have picked, and I kind of got overwhelmed. So instead, I'm going to talk. So Capricorn, you've been going through a hard-ass time, mentally, physically, financially, trying to get ducks in a row. You are like the hardest working zodiac sign. So you don't pay attention to a lot of things when it comes to yourself sometimes. And it could take a toll. And so here is your friendly re reminder to make sure you are taking time for yourself. Make sure you're taking a step back. Make sure you're doing self-care, paying attention to your body, paying attention to your own needs. And then let it trickle out to other spaces and other places in your life. But make sure that you are paying attention to yourself first. And I know that that's hard for some of you to do. But if you try to put that into practice, then... Maybe you can make it become a habit. All right, we're going to get into your reading. All right, Spirit, what lovely messages do you have for my Capricorn babies for the week of November 7th, 2021? Okay, <laughs> what did I just get done talking about Capricorn? Ay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have the Nine of Swords, and the Nine of Swords is you worrying about a lot. Um, the Nine of Swords is really about you losing sleep, making a mountain out of a molehill type of vibe. Not to say that there's nothing for you to worry about, but it's not to be worried about to the extent that you're worrying about it. We have the King of Wands. We have the Three of Cups. Four of Cups. One more. The Star. And we have the Eight of Pentacles. All right. So we'll pull some clarifiers in just a moment. So I am feeling like you're a little distraught about something. Now... This is all going to be your energy unless you use your own intuition and you decide it's another person coming into your life. That's going to be entirely um, because I don't know what your life is like. The way that things have been going, so many people have been on their own awakening, their own enlightenment, that they're learning different sides of themselves where, you know, it's like I could easily say that somebody is going to show themselves in your life. But the thing is, is that another side of yourself could have been w awakened within you that represents the same energy. So I'm just going to assume that you're this energy. So anyway, you've had some worries on your mind. You have been, you could be thinking about your health, somebody else's health. 
You could be thinking about uh, living situations, financial work, um, relationships, or you could be thinking about all the shit at once because you're an earth sign and our minds don't stop. Um, with the King of Wands, that is confidence, that is energy boosting, that is let's go forward with this. This very well could be a lot of mind play of I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do this, and oh, did I say that I wanted to do that? Oh, but what about this over here? So you have a lot of, you're multitasking a lot of uh, getting shit done. But the Three of Cups, I am feeling as if you're coming upon some kind of celebration for what you have done or for what you are thinking of doing or moving forward with. So it's a happy time. So luckily you move out of worrying to implementing an idea to a celebration. And then with the Four of Cups, it's almost like you're taking a step back because you're also being offered something. You know, either somebody's offering you their emotions or they're wanting to talk to you about something. Um, and you're contemplating it. You're just kind of sitting there on your own. Like, you know, but the thing is, is that this offer doesn't come in until after you have celebrated something. So be, be weary about that. You know, it's almost like a sense of, okay, Capricorn is doing good. So let me go ahead and swoop in. Now that Capricorn is doing good. You know, I mean, some of you might want that offer, especially if it's a business or if it's a, transa a transactional offer. But some of you are going to be like, hold up. Where were you at when I was at my lowest? And you could have been helping me build up instead of me worrying my head off about it. So with the star, I do feel as if after this offer comes in, there's a sense of healing, a sense of relief, a sense of things kind of balancing itself out for you. And, you know, the star is all about you, you know, it's mainly about healing. Bringing things to a close and putting like a good closure on it, you know, so that way you can go forward. With the Eight of Pentacles, I feel like you are concentrating on work and on your stability. So whatever it is that you decide with this Four of Cups, it's going to bring healing and it's going to make your focus go into overdrive once again on getting things done for what you need to get done. Almost like... You're going to concentrate back on work and you're going to get things handled. Because that's what you do anyway, Capricorn. All right, we're going to get clarifiers for all these cards. Spirit, please clarify the Nine of Swords. This came out first, which is the moon card, which I'm not shocked because the moon card is right here. And look at the nine of swords. You got the moon card there too. So whatever it was that you were worried about with the nine of swords, you know, it definitely is a, you know, something that needs to come to the light. And the thing is, is that, you know, picture yourself in the woods at night. You know that you have a pathway, but you can't see very well. Okay. So it's like, in order to get through the woods, you have to walk through the woods. But you can see the path, but you can't see all the objects that might be in your way. So it's like, I'm going to move forward at a steady pace, you know. And just know that eventually the sun has to come up. So little movement is better than no movement. But being careful in the moonlight to make sure that you're not taking any missteps. That's where I feel like you are. Especially with the Hierophant. The Hierophant is with the King of Wands. 
So the King of Wands could be an energy coming in or it could be your own energy. Either way, it is a lesson to be learned. It is a sense of structure. It is, um, for some of you, it could be a marriage card. Um, for some of you, it could be a card of lessons of what you are learning within yourself. You know, so if this King of Wands is a person coming in, you know, uh, Wands is Fire Energy, Sagittarius, Aries, uh, Leo. So, then we have, so the Hierophant could be, you know, something like that. Or you guys might be planning a wedding or something and trying to get through all the plans. So, with the Three of Cups, we have the Knight of Pentacles. So before the celebration takes place, the Knight of Pentacles is about, is this stable? Is this steady? You know, the Knight of Pentacles is not a fast moving knight. It actually is like no movement. It's more of a, I'm going to stand here and protect and stand guard. And I'm just going to hold everything in place right here. A very grounding energy while it is just collecting data. So I feel like if, you know, you grounding yourself, you pulling back from the situation, taking back your depression, taking back your overthinking is why the celebration happens. So in a sense of, okay, I'm going to surrender to this and I'm going to see what happens is what actually gives you success. But with this four of wands, you have an offer coming into you of some sort. And you're contemplating it and you're thinking about it. And the card that comes up for that is the Ten of Wands. So it makes you feel heavy about it. And once again, here's the moon. It makes you feel heavy about it. You're not sure what you want to do with it. You're not sure how you're going to go about it. You're still moving forward, but you're carrying all this weight on your back. You know, it's a very stressful, heavy weight. Like, what am I supposed to do with this? So this could be something that kind of catches you off guard and gives you almost like instant weight. But I do feel like you sort through it. You think about it. You know, the star is about healing. Then we have the eight of cups. The eight of cups is about you moving forward, moving forward with your, uh, with your emotions, moving forward with everything that you have within you. And look, once again, there's the moon. You're starting to see. And actually, if you look at it, it's the moon and a little bit of like a sunrise. Okay. So it's like you're starting to see what you need to see. And instead of moving backwards, you're moving forwards. You know, like the, the Ten of Wands, you're moving backwards with the weight. But then you're like, you know what, fuck this weight. I'm shedding this weight. I'm going to, you know, figure out what I need to. And then I'm going to move forward towards the sunrise. And so you're leaving everything behind so you can go forward. So when it comes to the Eight of Pentacles of you, you know, focusing on your work and things like that. King of Swords comes out. There we are. King of Swords comes out. So King of Swords is... You know, that would be for air signs for some of you who, you know, do the astrology. So that would be Libra, Aquarius, Gemini. I see cups in here too. So that could be Pisces, Cancer, and uh, Scorpio. And of course, earth signs. So I see everything here. I see everything here, you know, uh, earth signs, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. So with the King of Swords, the King of Swords is very calculating, a very to the point, not necessarily cold, but just like, I'm not going to deal with any bullshit <laughs> type of thing. You know, like, I feel like you're totally going to come full circle, but in the end, 
you're going to come to clarity with what you need to come to clarity on. And once again, look, there's the moon right there. But the moon is behind you and you're looking away from it. So it's like, I already figured out what I need to figure out. And I'm going to go forward with, with my clarity. So you are going to come to clarity about something in your life. Only you know what this is. And you're going to go forward and you're going to be that strong king of swords. So that's what I have for you, Capricorn. And we are going to pull some oracle messages. You know what? I'm going to turn these cards like this so that way I can bend them the other way because they are giving me problems. Sometimes you just have to change the shuffle. All right, Spirit, what lovely oracle messages do you have for my Capricorn babies? For those of you in numerology, this card is number 48. It's called A Burst of Magic. I definitely feel like you are stumbling within your own. And you are going to have that burst of magic. That's where that King of Wands came in. This is number 49. Yeah. Number 49. Willing Release. I do feel like you guys are letting go of some burdens. With the burst of magic, that's really about you tapping in within your own intuition and you're letting go what no longer serves you. So that way you can grow. And you recognize where you need to grow. When it comes to willing release, once again, it goes to surrendering. It goes to you believing what is meant for you is going to be there and you are letting go, once again, of what no longer serves you. And then we have a grand symph symphony, and that's number 27. So with the grand symphony, that's you understanding that you have like an orchestra, you have like a band going on within yourself. You're getting everything balanced out, who plays what, how they play it, how it's going to be in your life. And you're getting it, you're really getting it all figured out, Capricorn. It's taking you some time to do it, but also know that the Grand Symphony is the music within yourself. So make sure you are taking that time to listen to yourself, take self-care, love yourself the way that you would love another person. And also give yourself advice and give yourself talks the way that you would talk to somebody else. You know, sometimes you need your own inner guidance too. So that's what I have for you this week, Capricorn. I am sending you so much love, light, healing, and protection. If you like your video, please feel free to like it, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you resonate with this. I'd really like to know. So have a great week and I will talk to you soon.